Good morning, church. I warmly welcome all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The world we are living in is changeable. As you know, even the coronavirus keep changing. They found recent variants like Delta Plus, Lambda, and all different variants coming up. Also, people are never the same. As someone says, you cannot touch the same river twice, for it continually flows. Probably you are not the same as yesterday, and you, you will not be the same tomorrow like today. We are keep changing. But our Lord is always the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So as you come to worship today, our faithful God will be with you and bless you. So we will start with an announcement. We have a very important announcement for this week, especially if you have uh, children. Uh, BBS starting tomorrow. There are a lot of preparations and efforts, endeavors uh, for this event. So our Director of Religious Education, Mr. Lee, will come forward, will give us some announcements about BBS. Morning, church. Um, um, it's an honor to be here. That, uh, as you all know, that we have uh, vacation Bible schools going on. Uh, without your support, we will not have this. So first of all, I really thank you for your help. Uh, we have a lot of volunteers coming from your congregations and all other congregations. So that's amazing. Uh, the first day that we open up the registration through the website, uh, less than 24 hours that we all had 300 kids signed up. So that's amazing, that's amazing. And we had uh, over uh, 50 people's waiting list and um, uh, that was also amazing too. Uh, without your help, without your support, we would not have that. And uh, coming tomorrow uh, until Friday, next, this coming Friday, we'll have a Vacation Bible School at 4 CMC. So if you I would love to ask you to uh, continue pray for us, uh, continue to uh, make it successful, uh, the VBS, and um, hopefully that uh, throughout the VBS, uh, we uh, were able to uh, 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 recruit, uh, having a new, new uh, having uh, more uh, newcomers. <laughs> um, not just the uh, in-person VBS, but uh, we also have a virtual VBS. Uh, we're gonna have a link through the Facebook uh, RSO Facebook and uh, VBS Facebook. So if any of you that you wanted to uh, 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 invite any you know, kids from your neighbors, please use the uh, virtual VBS. Uh, we were uh, able to record all the VBS um, and, uh, and uh, we, we, we edited, uh, we spent a lot of time making a, a virtual VBS. So we do have a kit already, all the, uh, the bags ready at the 4CMC. So if you need it, uh, maybe stop by and asking for, hey, I'd like to pick up the virtual VBS for my neighbors. That'll be wonderful. I would love to give to them. So uh, please advertise uh, uh, virtual VBS. Uh, the in-person VBS is only one week, but virtual VBS we can have for one month. So starting from the uh, uh, Monday, uh, uh, tomorrow, August 9, and we can still have it on our Facebook and your neighbors maybe just use the, uh, the craft materials that, that we provided through the bomb bags that they can still have the virtual VBS. So please use the uh, uh, tools to advertise and, in, and invite uh, your neighbors. Thank you so much for your help. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. So we have a uh, member in who been volunteered faithfully at the choir, but sadly she has to leave today. Uh, so Sophia Godfrey, uh, please come forward, and she is leaving our congregation uh, today to uh, Kansas for college. So please pray for her, and we have a little gifts as traditional common ground towel. <laughs> And also we have uh, Chaplain Lee, our senior pastor's uh, family, like his wife and two kids, Isaac and Sean, uh, leaving tomorrow. 
And they will be back, though, but we do not know when they will be back. So please keep, please stand and please pray for that family for safety trip, safe trips, and safely come back to join us. Is there any body leaving? Today is the last Sunday in this congregation. Or is there anybody first time visiting our? Yeah, we have one family here. Anybody else? Okay, we have one family. Okay, welcome. If you like to introduce yourself, you are free to introduce. But if you like just to sit, that's fine. Please feel free. Anybody want to introduce yourself? Okay. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Great, thank you. Welcome. Thank you, welcome. All right, let's gather our hearts and let's come to the Lord. Uh, today's uh, call to worship is from Psalm 27, verse 4. It says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life, I gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ. We come before you with a thankful heart and we celebrate for what you have done in our lives. Please fill us with your spirit as we come with hunger for your presence and words. We give all the glory to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Please stand with me in body or in spirit as you are able this morning as we join our voices together to cry out to our Father and to praise his name. We are going to start with hymn number 602 in the light blue hymnals in front of you. If you want to grab a hymnal, it's also going to be on the screens. I have decided to follow Jesus. <laughs>
So we continue to worship our living God through tithe and offering. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things, and every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory. May these gifts bring shelter to the homeless, comfort to the sick, rest to the weary, and hope to the hopeless. We give freely, and there is nothing we could give that matches your glory and majesty and the great gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
take a time for silent prayer. During this time of silent prayer, think of one thing you'd like to ask God. King David asked one thing to God to dwell in the house of the Lord. What is yours? What is your burning desire in your heart? You want to ask this one thing. This is very essential for my life. This I need to ask God. So this brief moment of silence, please examine your heart and ask for the question. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts to seek your grace. You are not worthy to deserve your love and mercy, but by your grace alone, we are able to come before you with confidence. O oh Lord, clean our hearts so that we can see you. Through the worship, help us to experience your presence among us. Please receive our worship as we give all our hearts, minds, and strength. May only your name be exalted in high through our living sacrifice. O oh Lord, we pray for the leaders of the government, military, and community. In this critical and rapid changing world, I pray for your guidance and wisdom as they lead the people and make critical decisions. We also pray for those who are deployed, exposed to harm's way, and away from the families and loved ones. We pray for your loving care in the midst of many challenges and trials they face day by day. We pray for the soldiers and families who are facing constant challenging missions and separations. May your powerful and healing hands be with them. O oh Lord, we pray for those who are sick physically, mentally, and emotionally. You are the source of eternal hope and life. May your comforting and healing hands be with them. O oh Lord, we are here to listen to your words and give you all the glory. Open our eyes to see your glory. Open our ears to listen to your voice. And open our hearts to welcome you into our lives. Father, we thank you for giving us this time and place to worship you. Please let the Spirit of God move us, fill us, and transform us. O oh Lord, we continue to pray as you taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
is time for our children to be dismissed for children's church, children kindergarten to fifth grade. And if the congregation would please sing with me, Jesus Loves Me. Good morning, Common Ground. All right. Our scripture reading is coming from Mark, chapter 8, starting from verse 34 until the end of the chapter. If you have the Bible with you, please turn, the, uh, turn your Bible to uh, the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 8, verse 34 to 38. This is what the Word of God says. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for man to, to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man Give in exchange for his soul. If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Amen. Amen. God is love and God loves you, and God has a wonderful plan for your life. Can we all say to one another, hey, to the person next to you, to the left, then right, hey, Jesus loves you, and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Let's all do that. All right, every morning, I mean, not every morning, every Sunday morning, when you walk into the building, you receive this bulletin, right? And very front of it, what does it say? Kingdom building, kingdom builders. You know, I shared with you several weeks ago when I first preached uh, my message with you, when I shared the message with you, we are all kingdom builders. And Chaplain Lee, our senior pastor, whenever he has a chance, he stands up here and he reminds you the fact that we are all kingdom builders, right? And if you remember when I first preached the, uh, my message here, I talked about what it means to be a kingdom builder. Who are the kingdom builders? I'd like to continue this series. This is part two. And uh, who are the kingdom builders? Okay? And uh, I want to just give you a little bit of a review what we talked about last time when I, uh, when I preached. So based upon the previous passage, um, the kingdom builders are the ones who knows the identity of Jesus Christ. Kingdom builders are the ones who knows who Jesus Christ is. Jesus is not just guru. Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is not just a moral teacher. Jesus is not just a legend. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the chosen one of God who came to this world to save you and me. He is a savior of the universe. He is a savior of the world. Kingdom builders understand that. Kingdom builders know that, the identity of Jesus Christ. Not only they know the identity of Jesus Christ, but also they know the mission of Jesus Christ. Why did Jesus come? Why did he come? 
I mean, sometimes we all wonder why are we here on earth? We think about our own purpose of our life. Why did God send me to this world, right? And definitely Jesus had a purpose in his, in his life. Jesus had a mission in his life that is to go to the cross as a sinless person, as a son of God, and shed the blood and die and give up his ultimate sacrifice for me and for you so that I may live, so that I may enjoy eternal life, so that I may enjoy the personal relationship with my heavenly Father. I can enter into the presence of God and they call him Abba, Father. And that's the mission of Jesus Christ. So last time when I preached, kingdom builder has to have this understanding of who Jesus Christ is and his mission. And he has to believe that from, from the bottom of his heart and make the confession, yes, Jesus is my Lord. Yes, Jesus is my Savior. He came to this world to die on the cross for my sin. And today, in today's passage, if the previous passage we talked about is that we have understanding of who Jesus is and you know, why he came to this world, today we'll, we'll be looking at today's passage and we'll be looking at ourselves. Okay? What are the requirements? What does it mean to be a kingdom builders? Let's turn to today's passage again. It says this, Then he called a crowd to himself along with his disciples, and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself. He must deny himself. So today's passage, I do believe that the kingdom builders are the ones who surrender. Kingdom builders are the ones who surrender completely themselves to Jesus Christ. Kingdom builders are the ones who submit themselves completely to Jesus Christ. And the question is, how do we do that? How do we completely surrender our life and ourself to Jesus Christ? The first point is by denying themselves. By denying myself, by denying ourselves, we surrender completely to Jesus Christ. Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you know, by the way, choir, and orchestra, praise the Lord, praise God for you guys. You guys did a great job today. I thought I heard the voice of angel today. Can we give them a big round of applause, by the way? <laughs> you know, when they say, you know, we must take up our cross. I'm glad that they kind of synchronized with my message today, right? That's awesome. As a pastor, it's always good to see that choir, the songs that we select are being in sync with your message. It's a great thing, okay? And uh, so we as a kingdom builders, we surrender completely ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do that? We do that by denying ourselves. What does it mean to deny ourselves? In the history of Christianity, there were a group of people who lived in ascetic lifestyle. They believed that by living in their ascetic lifestyle, they were denying themselves. What kind of lifestyle was that? That was denying food, you know, denying drinks, denying water, and they even abstained from uh, 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 getting married. And uh, sometimes they were physically, you know, beat themselves up. You know, my body, physical body is so evil, and it's not in obedience to God's will, so I'm going to beat myself up. They physically abused themselves, you know, beat their body up. You know, that kind of life's ascetic lifestyle. Is that what it means to deny ourselves. Is it what Jesus Christ means when he says, deny yourself? We as a kingdom builder, we need to understand what it means to deny ourselves. It means basically giving our control over to Jesus Christ. As we surrender ourselves to Jesus, we are surrendering our control over to Jesus Christ. It's like when you are driving, when you're driving, who's sitting behind the wheel, behind the steering wheel? It's you, right? You call the shot. You decide where to go. You decide when to uh, press the gas. You decide when to press you know, the, uh, uh, what is it, the, the brakes. 
but denying ourselves by denying it we're yielding the driver's seat to our lord jesus christ jesus come to my life and sit at the driver's seat and you drive my life if you want me to stop i will stop if you want me to go i will go whatever you take me to i will be there it's like you know we at the center of our life we have a throne we have a throne. Now imagine the throne, right? Now who's sitting at the center of your life? Who is sitting on the throne? Who's calling the shot in your life right now? It is me or is it Jesus Christ? Jesus wants to sit on the throne of your life. Jesus wants to be the Lord of your life. Jesus wants to be the boss of your life. And Jesus wants to call the shot, not me. And that's what it means to deny myself, deny ourselves. We're completely surrendering our will. We're completely surrendering our control over to Jesus Christ. Jesus, have your way in me. You take complete control over my life every single day, every single moment. I'm going to deny my will. I don't want to do what I will. I don't want to choose to do what I will, but I want to choose what you will. I want to choose your will over my will. I want to choose your agenda over my agenda. See, we're completely surrendering ourselves to God by denying ourselves Jesus demonstrated this point in his life as well remember when Jesus was at the uh, uh, at the garden of Gethsemane the night before he was crucified he brought his disciples along with him hey guys you know my soul is emotionally very distraught right now can you come along and pray with me stay away don't you over there and pray with me and Jesus went along to the father and then he prayed you know what he said? He said, Father, Father, I know that you can move, remove this cup from me, but not my will, for your will be done. Time, at, time after time, Jesus has demonstrated that I am denying my own will, but I am, I am accepting the will of the Father. Jesus demonstrated his self-denial even to the point of the, of the cross. Kingdom builders, we surrender ourselves and our lives completely to our Lord Jesus Christ, first of all, by denying, by denying ourselves. That will lead us to the uh, second point. That is that we surrender our lives to Jesus we surrender completely to Jesus by taking up our cross. And what does it mean to take up our cross? It's not just wearing a cross necklace, you know, whenever you don you know, yourself in the morning, you know, ready to go to work, right? You sometimes pick, you know, which jewelry is better, you know? Am I going to wear the cross or, you know, the cross earring or whatever? the jewelries that you wear. It's not, it doesn't even mean that you know, wearing a cross tattoo on your body. That's not what it means to take up the cross. I mean, these days, like rocker, heavy metal, you know, these rockers, you know, they have those kind of you know, cross in all of the places. You know, it looks cool to them, right? It's a fetish thing, isn't it? It's a fashion thing, isn't it? But back then, in the first century, when Jesus says, take up your cross, there's an imagery came to the mind of these people. Do you know what the imagery is? When Jesus says, take up your cross, what imagery was that? The imagery is this, basically a criminal, a sentence to, sentence to death, and he was carrying his own cross to the place where he's going to be executed by the means of crucifixion. That was the imagery that all these people had in the first century. So when Jesus says, take up your cross, what does that mean? That means lay down your life for me. Jesus even demonstrated that, right? Jesus says this, greater love has no one than that, 
that he laid down his life for his friends. Jesus said, yes, I am going to lay down my life for you. That's why he went to the cross and died. He even demonstrated this point. And he's asking, now, you as a kingdom builder, you as my disciples, are you willing to lay down your life for me? Are you willing to lay down your life for me? This taking of the cross intensified their first point, you know, denying yourself. Not only do we deny our will, but can we deny ourselves to the point of death? Jesus is asking, can you not only deny your will, deny yourself, completely surrendering yourself, even your own life? Can you do that? Why? Why do we need to uh, lay down our life for our Lord Jesus Christ? Look at the verse 35 and 37. 35 to 37. This is what it says. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. For whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man gain in exchange for his soul? What Jesus is saying is that what is the most important thing in, in the whole world? Jesus is saying that your soul, your soul is the most important thing. How do we save it? How do we save that? Jesus is by losing it. It's a paradoxical statement, isn't it? One of the uh, biblical paradoxical statements in the Bible. Losers are the keepers. You've got to lose your life to keep your life. You've got to lay down your life to save you got to be willing to sacrifice your own life for Jesus and for the sake of the gospel in order for us to save him. We as a military, we know what it means to give ultimate sacrifice to our country. That's what we signed up for, right? If our nation calls, we go to war and we, de- we lay down our lives for our country and for American people. It's a noble thing. It's an awesome thing. But you know what is more noble and more awesome? That is laying down your life for the kingdom of God. Laying down your life for the sake of Jesus Christ. That is greatest honor that we can do for our Lord Jesus Christ. We see the disciples of Jesus Christ, the early, the first century kingdom builders. They left their family. They left their career. When Jesus went wherever they were, when they were fishing, Jesus said, follow me. And the Bible says immediately they left their net. They left their fishing boat and they followed Jesus Christ. It says they gave up. They gave up their own career to follow Jesus Christ, to be a kingdom builder in his kingdom. They left their even family. You know, John and James, sons of Zebedee, they left their family and followed Jesus Christ. Even they left their family to be a kingdom builder. And at the end of their life, most of them, most of them gave ultimate sacrifice for the sake of the kingdom of God. One example is that Peter, do you know how he died? He died. He was crucified just like our Lord Jesus Christ. But he said, I'm not worthy to be crucified like this. So I'm going to crucify upside down. He laid down his life for his Lord, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying that you are the kingdom builder. As you live a life, you know, as you walk, as you... Uh, uh, Live a life of disciple. And I want you to be willing to lay down your life for me. One hundred and eighty years after the death of Charlemagne, the king of the Franks, he became emperor of Rome eventually. In about the year one thousand, officials of the Otto Empire, uh, Emperor Otto. Upon the great king's tomb, 
where they found the amazing sight apart from the treasures. He had basically everything. He had wealth. He had a pleasure of the world. He had a, a fame. You know, he had all the things the world has to offer. But when they opened up his tomb, they still found a lot of treasures around him. And he had his still crown upon his head and copy of the Gospels lying in his lap with his bony finger resting on this text. What good is it for men to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Think about it. Even if you gain the whole world, even if you gain like all the money, all the wealth in this world, what good is it if you lose your life? So Jesus is saying that the reason why we need to take up our cross daily and follow Jesus Christ to be kingdom builder, that's the only way that we save our life. Just like Jesus gave up his own life, you know, we must be willing to lay down our life for our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the second point. The kingdom builders, we completely surrender ourselves and our lives to Jesus Christ. How do we do that? Number one, by denying ourselves. Number two, by taking up our cross. And lastly, by following Jesus Christ. Again, the passage says, Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, if anyone would like to be my disciple, if anyone would like to be a kingdom builder, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Again, there is the imagery of the word follow. When Jesus says, follow me, the follow had imagery that is that the shepherd is simply walking in front of the, uh, the herd of the sheep. And the sheep, what, it, what they do is they, they look at the shepherd and they follow the footsteps of the shepherd. Just follow whatever the shepherd takes them to. That's the imagery of the word follow. What Jesus is saying that you are my sheep. I'm your good shepherd. Follow me. I'm going to lead your life. I'm going to guide your life. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to take you to the uh, eternal home. Just fix your eyes on me and follow me. But we as sheep, you know, we know that as Jesus Christ tells us the parable of the lost sheep, and also a passage in the Isaiah talks about we all like sheep have gone astray. We are prone to wander. We easily lose our sight of Jesus Christ and that we look at something else and we go off tangent. What is those things that sometimes we lose, makes us to lose our sight of Jesus Christ and go off our tangent? Sometimes it is our retirement, isn't it? You know? I mean, do I have enough money? We got so anxious about our money. We're so worried about our retirement. Do I have enough retirement funding in a TSP? Or do I have enough money in the bank account that, you know, I mean, average life span is about 80 to about 100 these days. You know, my retirement is about 62. Will I be able to find a job? Will I have to have enough money for that? Sometimes it gets us worried and it gets us, you know, lose our eyes on Jesus. And they follow the wealth, follow our career, and follow something else other than our Lord Jesus Christ. And whenever we do that, Jesus says, Ben, don't worry about your retirement. I will take care of you. I'm your good shepherd. I led your life until thus far. I will take care of you. Just fix your eyes on me and follow me. That's what Jesus is saying. So as a kingdom builders, what does it mean to be kingdom builders? It means surrendering completely 
completely surrendering our lives and our soul to Jesus Christ, who is the kingdom builder par excellence. We need to surrender ourselves to him. First of all, by denying ourselves. Secondly, by taking up our cross. And lastly, fixing our eyes on Jesus and continue to follow him. That's who kingdom builders are. So my challenge to all of you, are you kingdom builders? Are you denying yourself? Are you taking up your cross? Is your eye fixed on Jesus and you're following Jesus? You know what? This is not one-time thing. This is not just, yeah, I deny myself. Yeah, I'm going to take up my cross. Yes, I did that. It's not just one time thing. It's a continual self denial. Every day, every day, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we ought to do is that, Lord Jesus, I'm going to deny myself. I'm not even, you know, I'm going to call the shot in my life. Lord Jesus, come to me. You, know, you enthroned at the center of my life as my Lord, as my Savior, as the boss of my life. You know, I want to follow you. And I'm willing to lay down my life for you even today. You know, that's the kind of attitude, that's the kind of mindset that we must have every single day. You know, Christianity is not about insurance policy, as some people think of it that way. Yeah, I got it. I believe in Jesus. I'm done. You know, I'm saved. My heaven is guaranteed. I can go and do my own thing. No. Christianity is not that easy. If you think that way, you're badly mistaken. It's about daily denying ourselves and accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life. And daily taking up our cross and being willing to lay down our lives for Jesus. and daily following Jesus. And that's what it means to be our kingdom builders. As we uh, begin our worship service today, we sing a song. You know, I was going to uh, end my message with a song, but we sang it at the beginning. I'm glad that we did that. Let's sing one more time together. Okay? Do you know what the song was? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Let's sing one more time. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Let us pray. I'd like for us to uh, take uh, several moments of silent prayer on our own. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you through the message today, I want you to respond to him in your prayer. So let's spend a few minutes in silent prayer. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Um, Lord, the challenge laid out before us is not an easy one. But Lord, we know that this is the way to life. This is the way that we are called to live daily by denying ourselves, by taking up our cross, and following Jesus Christ every single moment and every single day until we go to heaven and be with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, I ask for your mighty Holy Spirit, empower us, Lord Father, strengthen us, Lord, daily so that we may be a worthy a kingdom builders. And I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our final hymn. It's going to be hymn number 603, Jesus, I My Cross Have Taken. the benediction as you go from here as kingdom builders who continue to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus may the Holy Spirit empower you with his might and strength from now and forevermore amen <laughs>